the Athens Academy. Founded by Plato in 387 BC, the first institution of higher learning in the Western world, bustling with the great minds of the day, all wrestling with the same big question. When's the internet coming? Using the web to teach isn't new. But more recently, there's a trend towards using social web tools like blogs, YouTube and Twitter in the classroom. UNSW's Andrew Murphy and Matt Wall-Smith have recently launched the Network Literacies Project to develop the use and understanding of these tools. Central to the project is New South Blogs, an online publishing platform that aggregates web tools for students and academics. We're using a blog framework to to bring in all the other tools that we use. So any of our blogs will probably have a whole lot of delicious bookmarks coming in as we bookmark them, the students bookmark them and so on. Um, people are using it to run their course sites, but the course sites now include course outlines, class details, but also ongoing blog entries, which you might publish, YouTube videos, Twitter bookmarks, delicious feeds, all kinds of things come into that. And it's the very interactive nature of social web tools that academics are finding so useful in the classroom. So what you can do with a, with a web 2.0 site or something that's built more like a blog or even more like a wiki is that you can deliver material gradually and you can allow students to interact with your course materials in a very different way. The students upload custom um, models and environments to FileFront so that I can download them. Uh, they upload the videos that they shoot inside these environments to YouTube. Um, and then they link back from YouTube to Blogger. Uh, they'll upload still images to um, Flickr and have them tagged and have them um, indexed and, and uh, catalogued almost into, into different uh, groups. Uh, and then they'll tie those back into uh, their Blogger account. I've started to use Twitter in the lectures now. And, um, How do you do that? Well, you put Twitter up, you get them to tag it with, say, MDCM3000, which was the code for the course. And then if students want to make comments to each other even, they can make comments behind my back, literally, <laughs> on the screen to each other. They can answer questions uh, that they might ask with each other. They can make, uh, ask me questions. Um, and again, students who might not want to stand up and say something in a lecture, now we have some big lectures sometimes, 300 students or more, they might be quite happy to you know, come in with their Twitter ID and ask a question. Another student might answer it, a whole discussion might start. We're still experimenting with this, but again, you get all these kind of interesting new relationships that we weren't expecting. So those sorts of tools are really interesting because they plug into the open web, which is what I'm really interested in. So I want um, uh, tools that allow us not to work in a, in a, in a walled garden environment so much, uh, to use the jargon, but to uh, you know, work in the open world so that anyone could come and look at what you're doing if we wanted that, or we could restrict um, who the outsiders were, um, or we could invite outsiders in, and we could also connect to anywhere on the web. Just the act of engaging with these open technologies has provided the kind of platform for us yeah. to connect with what's going on at COFA and what's going on um, up with uh, going on with the uh, central university systems and the development of those systems. And so the fact that we've published things on an open an open blogging platform and we're constantly kind of visible to the network has meant that all of a sudden um, the work of our students, the work of our of the academics um, all can kind of connect in really interesting ways. Yeah, well. I mean, I think that's often Matt's really crucial point that he makes, you know, um, right from the beginning of this, is that really we're training people to be visible to the network and to manage that visibility. And there's a lot of added value, as Matt always says in this, you know, a lot of added value comes. Things just almost happen. I had a student who was just doing a, a weekly reading blog um, and not thinking too much of it. She was enjoying doing it. Um, but all of a sudden, she ended up on one of Singapore's uh, um, big web forums and she was being read by you know millions of people all of a sudden and she suddenly got this this kind of this amazing kind of realization that the work that she was doing for her course was visible to the world and had value to the wider world as well with this potentially limitless network of tools and platforms comes the problem of how to manage it all this is where the concept of network literacy comes in students for example will be choosing when to post their blogs to the new south blog site when to tweet with that identity, 
when to treat with another identity. We say to them, look, we don't want to hear about what you did on Saturday night, really. Well, we might, but not in this context, you know. We want to hear about your research and your questions and those kind of uh, interesting things you're doing for your work here. It's really about understanding the standards that connect these things together and really taking control of those so that you are able to move to whatever the next Facebook is in an agile way. And, and you, you understand the the kind of value that you're adding to Facebook and how you might distribute that in other ways, um, how you might safeguard that information. So it's really the the core kind of network skills that you need to engage in, in everyday life now, particularly as a media professional. It's a long way from slates and wax tablets. So what can we expect from the next leap in publishing technology? The publishing is changing dramatically and the big thing that's changing is the organisation of the metadata behind that. Just simply all the descriptive terms that will describe what a web page or a text or a video or whatever it is about. Once that becomes more organised, which it is on a global scale now across the web, we'll have you know Web3, the semantic web, I think they're starting to call it Web Squared now. But um, whatever it is, you've got to get this not only an incredible openness, but very flexible, but very workable forms of organisation. So you want to find out X and Y, you can really find an X and Y. And that's before you get to the Internet of Things, the famous Internet of Things, where everything has a little bit of computer, a computer chip embedded in it, your hockey puck or your truck tyre or something has a little computer chip in it. Those are all wired and connected at a certain level. This is also happening. You can impose kind of, you know, your iPhone, suddenly you can impose all kinds of information on what it's seeing through its camera in real time. So these things are connecting up in a big way, they're getting much more open, much more open than we ever would have thought before, and then all that organisation, the meta organisation is getting really um, put on top of it. It's, 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 it's wild actually. <laughs>